your personality Without your personality Without your personality Ladies and gentlemen, that was Cult of Personality cover by Set the Charge. Look it up. It's a very good song. Set the Charge did a good cover. Did a fucking great cover of Cult of Personality. Of course, nothing will ever top the original, but still, Set the Charge. Fucking A. That was a pretty good cover. Okay, I know it's... I, I have another video... I don't know if I'm going to upload it before or after this. My thoughts on the Nick Lidstrom retirement. Um, but uh, a bunch of things have happened in the NHL. The Hall of Fame inductions, free agency, the, the bombshells. And right now it's July 4th. You know, Wednesday, July 4th. 4th of July. <laughs> and uh, a, a pretty big bombshell happened. As far as NHL free agency goes today, and I th thought now that I put fresh batteries in my camera, and the fucker won't die halfway through me trying to record a fucking video. I thought now I would record. Oh, you know what I'm trying to fucking do, Jesus Christ! I've been drinking for too damn long. Anyway, so. Let's get right to it. First up, the 2012 Hall of Fame class. Go to the TSN page here. Of course, everybody knows by now the four candidates that did make it. Uh, it was Joe Sakic, undeniable first ballot Hall of Famer. Adam Oates, Pavel Bury, and Matt Sundin. Matt Sundin, Animals Parabury, absolutely deserving, no questions asked. Although, I don't think, I'm, I'm stunned, to say the least, that Brendan Shanahan did not get in his first try. I don't know how he didn't. I was absolutely fucking stunned. So, we're going to run down the Hall of Fame candidates I don't get my opinion on them. Um, um, before I do that, to the Los Angeles Kings, thank you, fucking thank you, for beating the Devils. Coming from a diehard Rangers fan for almost 22 years now, do a couple more months, almost 22 years now, thank you. It was funny because going into the playoffs, I always said that if the Rangers were out, L.A. is the one team I'd like to see win it. I swear to God I said that. I even had it on my predictions that L.A. was going to go to the Stanley Cup Finals against the Rangers. I came, I, I came, what was it, this close, this close to having my prediction come true. But it fucking didn't. I'm a little pissy, but you know what, the Devils didn't win it. So, and L.A. is going to be a bitch to play against now because locked up long term they got Kopitar, uh, Carter, Richards, Dowdy, Quick. Oh, that team is going to suck to play against. But anyway, so let's run down the Hockey Hall of Fame candidates real quick. Uh, Dave Andrichuk, 23 seasons, no awards, one Stanley Cup, no All-Star selections, 1,639 games played, 640 goals, 698 assists for 1,338 points. It's got a cup. Look at the points. He's got no awards, no All Star selections. I. Even though he's got no awards and all sorts selections, that, that that's a hit right there, but I'm sorry, I gotta keep the camera straight. I'd say Sorry. Closing something on my computer. 
I'd say yeah, he'll get in. I say I say yes, he's he's a Hall of Famer. Okay, Pat Valberg is next on this list, but he got in, thank freaking God. Pat Burns in the builder category, 14 seasons. Coaching Montreal, Toronto, Boston, and the Devils. Three Jack Adams trophies, one Stanley Cup. He's got 501 wins in 1,019 games coached. Three Jack Adams, a Stanley Cup. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I'm reading the screen and the camera keeps going off center here. Sorry. I'd say yeah. Guy Carboneau. 19 seasons for Montreal, St. Louis, and Dallas. Three Selk trophies, three Stanley Cups. But only 663 points in 1,318 games played. If my camera will ever get... God damn it. Okay, okay, it's a little blurry, but you have to fucking, yeah, it's just blame me here. This is still on TSN, I have the page bookmarked, if you can still find it somewhere. 1,001, 1,318 games played, only 663 points. The point totals, that's a hit, like... He was a center. So it's not like he was a defenseman. I <laughs> Damn. But with three self trophies and three Stanley Cups. <sighs> See, I don't know. Damn, that is borderline. I I don't know on that one. That that is that is damn. That's borderline. Oh, oh wait, no, another free agency signing here. Oh yeah, here. Okay, that's blurry as shit. Wait, get my camera. Come on, come on. You can like. No, no, you're not getting clear. Okay. Um. Matt Carl. Matt Carlisle, Carl, I, I don't know. He played in Philadelphia last season. Six-year contract in Tampa Bay, five and a half million. Nice. Billy loses another piece. Ah, oh, shit, but he still stays in the East. Damn it. Anyway. Theo Fleury, 15 seasons with Calgary, Colorado, the Rangers, and the Blackhawks. God, I'm burping up a storm over here. One Stanley Cup and one All-Star selection. 1,088 points and 1,084 games played. I think he should. Yeah, I think he should get in. Alright, who we got next? Phil Housley, 21 seasons, defenseman with Buffalo, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Calgary, New Jersey, Washington, Chicago, Toronto. God damn, this motherfucker was all over the damn map. No awards, no Stanley Cups, but he's got one all-star selection. 1,232 points. In 1,495 games played. Damn, if you're almost a point per game defenseman? Holy shit. Who's only got an all-star selection to him? Sorry. Camera keeps... I keep moving the camera and I don't even know it. You know what's a point per game defenseman? Only one All-Star selection?
You know, I think he should, but somehow I don't think it's going to fly. I, I, I don't know. I think he should, but if he'll actually get in, I don't know. Cujo! Curtis Joseph, I'll be damned. 19 seasons for St. Louis, Edmonton, Toronto, Detroit, Phoenix, and Calgary. Fucking hell, I didn't know he was around much. I didn't know he played for that many damn teams. Anyway, no Stanley Cups, no All Star selections, and a King Clancy Award. 51 shutouts, 454 wins. 943 games played, 2.79 goals against average. <sighs> okay, here's my... F here's a shocker for you. I'm gonna go no on Cujo. I'm gonna say no. Alright, think about this. I may get shit for this. I don't know, especially for Maple Leafs fans. <laughs> he's got a King Clancy Award, yes. But he's got no cops, no All Star selections. He's got a 2.79 goals against average. That's creeping up there a bit. A good goal, yes. But it's not Hall of Fame worthy. Sorry, Cujo, but I got to pass. John LeClaire, one-third of the Legion of Doom line. 16 seasons of Montreal, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. No awards, one Stanley Cup, five All-Star selections. I actually won that Stanley Cup when Montreal went on that insane overtime run in 93. Um, 819 points in 967 games played. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, John Clare again, and yeah. What do I got? Oh, Mr. Crybaby Concussion himself. <sighs> Fucking Lindros. This is the one thing, this is the one player that has caused the most shit when it comes to Hall of Fame worthy. An Art Ross, a Hart, a Pearson Trophy, two All Star selections, 865 points in 760 games played. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this. I'm gonna break this down a little bit. Stats wise. Is he Hall of Fame worthy, stats wise? With an Art Ross, a Hart, a Pearson, two All Star selections, and 865 points in 760 games played. Oh, I can't even give it. I can't even give a definite selection on that. But I mean, if I just let Leclerc in with no awards and five All Star selections. You know, Lindros, Lindros was one of the best at the game in his time. I'm not going to say of all time. Hell no, I'm not going to say of all time. But during his time, he's one of the best in the game. And that was the that was the case of a lot of people were making with Pavel Berry, that during his time, there was almost nobody better. Well, of course, you know, there was Gretzky, but you you know what I mean. He was, he was towards the top of the list. I mean, that goes without saying, nobody can top the great one. But, ah, fuck. No. Stats-wise, yes, but... 
I don't think I I don't think he gets in. I know I'm gonna catch shit from this. But in my opinion, no boy no Eric Lindros. Kevin Lowe, six Stanley Cups, 19 seasons, anchoring that Edmonton defense. I just, it's decision ain't gonna take me long. Yes, Kevin Lowe is a Hall of Famer. Moving on, Marcus Nasland, 15 seasons. I remember we had him for a season. 15 seasons with Pittsburgh, Vancouver, and the Rangers. Got a Pearson Award, three All Star selections. Marcus Naslin. He's got 869 points in 1,117 games played. Good player. Not Hall of Fame worthy. Sorry, Naslin. Adam Oates is already in. Gary Roberts. 21 seasons with, Car with Calgary. Carolina, Toronto, Florida, Pittsburgh, and Tampa Bay. He's got a Bill Masterson trophy, one Stanley Cup, 910 points in 1,224 games played. <sighs> if it was up to me, He may get in during a down year when there's not, but as, as of right now, I'd say there's more worthy candidates. So, so right now, I got past Gary. Jeremy Roenick. See, this is difficult. 1,216 points in 1,363 games played. 20 seasons for Chicago, Phoenix, Philly, the Kings, and the Sharks. But he's got nothing. He's got no awards, cups, all-star selections, no nothing. I... I don't think so. No. Good player again, like, like Curtis Joseph. Good player... I don't think it's Hall of Fame worthy. Joe Sackick's already in. Brandon Shanahan. What the fuck? 21 seasons with the Devils, Blues, Whalers, Red Wings, and Rangers. King Clancy, three all, three Stanley Cup, three All-Star selections. 1,354 points in 1,524 games played. Do I have to see any more? This should, uh, this, this should be academic here. Yes, absolutely. Brandon Shanahan should have been a first ballot Hall of Famer. That was a disgrace he wasn't. We're not talking about his duties of handing out punishments here. No, 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 no. This is strictly what he did on the ice. He should have been a, a first ballot Hall of Famer. Anyway, who's the last one? Oh, Matt Sundin. Okay. Well, that will wrap that one up. So... It might be 4th of July, everybody. Oh, fuck, I almost forgot. The Ryan Sutter, Zach Parisi signings. Shit, I almost forgot. They both signed in Minnesota today. Well, I'm glad Parisi left New Jersey. Everybody knew he would. But I did not see that Sutter signing coming at all. Everybody knew Parisi was leaning towards Minnesota because that was his hometown and we're throwing a huge offer at him. But I did not see that Sutter signing coming at all. But you know what? With all the great prospects Minnesota's got coming up. Oh boy. I'm not going to say they're Stanley Cup contenders. Because it takes a lot more than two guys to make a team.
but with that top line of Parise, with Miko Koivu centering Zach Parise and Danny Heatley, that allows Setaguchi to slide back to the second line, provide secondary scoring. Oh boy, they're definitely they're definitely in the playoffs. But no, nah, it's not like they're contenders yet. Give it. Give it like two years, let the kids mature and develop a little bit, see how they play, then we'll talk. But right now, great signing. They're definitely in the playoffs. They may even be in the hunt for the division. But I don't know if they're Stanley Cup contenders yet. I, I think everybody's jumping the gun on this. Unbelievable signings by Minnesota. Kudos to Minnesota. But, oh, uh, I don't think they're Stanley Cup contenders yet. On the other hand, my Rangers signed Taylor Pyatt. Piat Pyatt. I don't know how to fucking pronounce his last name. I like it. Aaron Asham. I don't know why the fuck we needed him. We got rough there. I don't know why we needed him. So until next time, this is JJ Jerry Rum. Drink up, me hearties. Yo ho.